Hello, in this presentation, we will record the transaction related to the payment of inventory into our Excel bookkeeping problem, keeping in mind how this same information might be input to accounting software such as QuickBooks. If you would like more information about the QuickBooks Pro, take a look at our comprehensive course in the link below. We will first take a look at what it would look like in QuickBooks and then jump to our Excel problem and enter the data there. Note that this is the second part of this, meaning we have done an inventory payment problem prior to this, and therefore we'll be going a bit faster here. If you want more detail, go ahead and take a look at that prior presentation. First, we're going to take a look at QuickBooks and see how this might be entered into QuickBooks quickly and then go back to Excel and record this in Excel. In essence, we're just writing a check for inventory that we have received. So we would be writing a check, decreasing our checking account. We need to know prior to this what happens, however, so we can kind of get the flow of the inventory. And as we are here purchasing guitars, so we may have issued a purchase order for those guitars the purchase order being unique and something we have not yet seen it doesn't have a financial transaction a financial component meaning we haven't yet received the inventory and we haven't yet uh, made the payment and therefore we haven't seen it when we when we looked at our financial statements in terms of creation of the books in excel and that's one of those rare items on the home page of um the quickbooks screen here where we have this this form that we do fill out that doesn't have something that's actually related on the financial statement so be aware of that then we're going to receive the inventory and we get to then count it and record it and pay for it in essence at that point in time so we are now paying for the inventory and uh, receiving it at that point we're going to write the check for it and the transaction then would look something like this we would write the check within the check we would have the vendor uh, that we are paying to if we don't have uh, and the, the vendor if we don't have the vendor we can set it up and or the vendor might connect automatically to the purchase order depending on the software and the purchase order can then uh, populate the information that information including the amount of um, the purchase which is the 598 in this case and it'll give us the item number that's going to be the actual inventory so the items uh, in the case of QuickBooks, we'll be driving what is the inventory items as opposed to an expense over here on the expense tab. And then populate the cost here and everything. Uh, if it was related to the purchase order, it'll just pull everything over to this screen automatically. What is this doing in QuickBooks then? Well, of course it's a check, so it's going to be decreasing the checking account. QuickBooks will also increase the uh, inventory for the fact that we, in we bought inventory here. And it'll also track that inventory using an average method and record the sub, -sub account for inventory and uh, tell us how much inventory we have by item. We will now see that process in our Excel books. So we're going to record this same information into Excel. So here we are in Excel. Remember the process here is in essence, we are writing a check, meaning we're going to decrease the checking account and we're purchasing inventory. If we're talking about a book problem, we would in essence, the book problem would say, that we purchase inventory for cash that's what's going on here uh, remember though however we uh, may have issued a purchase order for this in the past and uh, then received that uh, inventory in the mail and making now we're going to make a payment at the point of the receipt that might be the process that we have gone through here book problem typically oftentimes might just say that we purchased inventory for cash so in that, that what we have here is the checking account. The checking account is going to go down because we wrote a check from it. It has a debit balance. We're going to do the opposite thing to it, which in this case would be a credit. So we're going to copy the checking account. We're going to scroll down. We have another uh, information put here. We're going to put the date of 125, 1-25. We're going to be under the date. We're going to think about the cash first because it's easiest to do so right clicking in l19 and pasting one two three we're then going to go to the home tab alignment group and increase the indentation we're then going to go to the credits section in n18 uh, put the amount of the credit of a negative 598 
We're then going to put the debit on top. I'm going to put it in on top by saying negative of this number. We could just type in a positive 598, but this is like the plug formula. We're just taking what's in that account and, and making it uh, flipping the sign. In essence, multiplying times negative 1 to flip the sign. And now we just need to know what that account will be. What are we purchasing? We're purchasing inventory. So the inventory will increase. We already know we're going to debit it because we credited cash. That's why I would think of cash first, the checking account first, whenever possible. If we think about, does that make sense? Well, it's a debit balance account. We need to increase it. We got more of it. Therefore, we're going to do the same thing to it, which will be a debit. So we will copy the cell AJ7 inventory asset. We're going to put that in cell L17. Right click and paste. One, two, three. This is our journal entry that we have journalized into the general journal, which we will now go through the process of posting to the general ledger, which will then be used to create the trial balance. Before we do so, we're going to freeze the panes to make that process a bit easier. We are in cell AJ1. We're going to scroll up to the view tab and we're going to go over to the windows group and the freeze panes item in the windows group. Then we're going to find that inventory uh, asset in the general ledger. Uh, here it is on our journal entry. Here it is on the trial balance. We'll scroll over till we find us the third account on the trial balance and therefore the third account on the general ledger. I'm going to scroll over till we get it side by side. There it is. And we want to be down here. We're getting a new one. So we're debiting the inventory asset account in cell AQ29. We're going to select equals and point to that 598. That'll increase the 2,345 by 598 to 2,943. That 2,943 then should also be on the trial balance. There it is, 2,943. It's also, we are also out of balance by that 598 until we record the other side, that to the checking account. So we're going to record this amount then to our checking account. The checking account, first account on the trial balance. Therefore, first account on the general ledger. Scrolling down to the next section in the open area in the general ledger checking account is in cell AN17, where we will select equals and then point to that 598 bringing the balance down from a debit of 125,728 down by 598 to 125,130. That same amount then will appear on the checking account, 125,130, and we are back in balance, meaning that the debits represented here with positive numbers minus the credits represented here with negative numbers equals zero, and that, of course, means that the debits equal the credits. Scrolling back up then, uh, we can see, we then do need to see what this inventory account, this is posted to the inventory account. Now we have inventory of 2,943. Those are in dollars. We also want to know what that is made up of in terms of types of inventory. In our case, types of guitars. That's what we sell. So we also need to record this in the subsidiary ledger. So we're going to scroll over to the subsidiary ledger and and we have to record this there as well this is going to back up the information on the trial balance and just scroll in right until we see the subsidiary ledger it's got the purchase section the cost of goods sold and then the ending inventory we're going to record purchases here we're going to record uh, sales or cost of goods sold when we sell items here and then we're going to see what is still left in ending inventory in this case, we had a purchase, but we need to see which guitar we purchased, and we purchased a GSB or a Gibson SB. So we're looking for a GSB type of inventory. So we'll scroll down, and we're looking for a GSB and these types of inventory. And we actually didn't have a GSB, so we have added the inventory item of a GSB here, which will be on the worksheet when you're working through it. So your worksheet should have the inventory item of a GSB. When we're doing this by Excel, of course, if we're if we're adding a new inventory item that we have not yet purchased, then we're going to just add a new set of, of columns so that we can track the new inventory item, this being a Gibson uh, SG guitar. 
And when we purchase these now, we're going to be able to track those using an average method within uh, this section. So we're then going to say that we purchased this on the date of, let's see, it's on 125. And we're going to say that we got one of these items. The unit cost is going to be 598. So then we'll just multiply that out. So we're going to say this equals, and we're going to pull the one times the five, just point to that 598 and enter. So we're going to record this same information over here in the ending inventory. So we could just copy it over. I'm just going to say that this equals this one. And then this equals, I'm going to point over to that 598. And then we'll do the same calculation. I'm going to say this equals one times 598 and enter. So this item here will show us uh, what we purchased, the, the, the purchasing column, and then we're going to add those over to the ending inventory, what is still left. This is included in what is in ending inventory. If we scroll down, this item here then needs to be updated for this new uh, item we have set up if it's not in there already. So we'll just double click and see if it's there. Notice it's taking the end number of each account. It does not yet include this account in, in my screen. It might include it in yours, in your worksheet. So I'm going to include it. I'm just going to go to the end of it and say plus and point to that 598 and enter. So now if I double click on this formula, I can see if it's picking up everything I want. Looks correct. And so we'll say enter. And that should be the amount then that is on the financial statements. That should be amount then that is on the general ledger and the amount on the trial balance. Those all drawn from the same location. So that's the 2942. Let's remember that 2942 and we'll check that going back to the general ledger. 2942. There it is on the financial statements, by the way, which we'll check in a second. It's $1 off. That's okay. It's rounding. We're going to scroll back to the general ledger and the inventory item then scrolling down is 2943. Looks good. It's $1 because it's because of rounding. That's okay. And then we've got the 2943 there, so that all looks good. Now note that this trial balance is getting uh, a bit more complex here. It's pretty easy for us to get a lot of the numbers that we want from it, however. If we just double click on the assets, there's our assets. I could just highlight the assets. There's going to be a calculation from QuickBooks 238903. Our liabilities, if we just double click here, that's calculating our liabilities. We can just highlight the liabilities, which are these items here. 8860. This is represents who we owe to. In our equity section, we can get a couple different ways. We see that net income is going to be revenue minus expenses. That being a credit, credits beating the debits, meaning we have more credits of revenue than debits of expenses by net income of 446. And the total equity includes all the blue accounts. So it includes equity two and draws, which would be the 150843. Note that this bottom half, the blue, uh, the, the light blue and the dark blue, the uh, equity section, will also equal the top half, meaning the assets, this plus this plus this plus this, minus the liabilities, minus the credit, minus the credit, minus the credit, minus the credit, will equal the liabilities. So the green minus the orange equals the blue. The assets minus the liabilities equals the, the equity of 150843 we can see that in terms of financial statements by saying, let's first look at what we changed. So I'm just going to say that should automatically populate in the financials. This should automatically populate on the financials. Scrolling over the financials to see how those changes look on them. We will scroll over, just scrolling right. There's the assets. There's the inventory. There's the total assets, the 238903, uh, which matches the liabilities and equity. There was no impact on the income statement from this uh, transaction. Therefore, we are still at net income of 446. That net income included on the statement of equity. Total statement of equity ends at 150,843. That amount also found on the balance sheet here. So that's all automated, all done. Uh, once we enter the, the journal entry and the data into the general ledger, as in a similar way, it can be done in accounting software. We do want to know that process so that we can go back and troubleshoot if there are problems and see how this stuff is built so we can fix it 
uh, and and see how to how to maneuver around and interpret the data that is being presented.